Hi, this is Helena Hart, and welcome to the Master Your Magnetism podcast, where I answer your questions to help you shift your vibe and create the life and relationship you've always wanted. Today, I invited my husband, Tom, on because we received a question that was addressed to both of us. So welcome, Tom. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So I'll go ahead and play the question now so everyone can hear it. Hey, Helena and Tom, I really don't feel my guy is prioritizing me as much as he should. How is it that I can make him feel committed? What is it that I need to do the steps that would be fantastic to learn? So Tom, I'm curious, what are your initial thoughts on this question? The first thing I'd say is that commitment is something that has to be driven from within. It has to be something that he is willing to do of his own volition. I think at best, your attempt to try to drive someone to commit will not have any effect at all, but at worst, it may actually have exactly the opposite effect you're trying to achieve. In fact, if you're able to get somebody to agree to, say, a committed relationship, it may be showing that person that you are ready to commit to the relationship as it currently stands, which may actually give a man a reason to prioritize you and your relationship even less now that he has a greater sense of security and the likelihood that you will stick around. If he's not prioritizing you, then the relationship probably is not something to which you want to commit yourself further and get further invested in. Like someone applying for a job, it takes sometimes a strong resume and a convincing interview to be hired, but once hired, some people will only work so hard as to not be fired. And it may turn out to be a similar circumstance in a relationship if a man is only willing to commit so far as to maybe the label of the relationship. Maybe he's willing to commit to, say, be your boyfriend, but that's really as far as it goes. Yeah, I hear from women all the time who were in situations where the man might step up for a little while, especially if he gets the sense that he's going to lose her if he doesn't. But in situations like this, just like you said, eventually he kind of slips right back into his default mode, whatever he was comfortable doing before. And then what is she supposed to do? She's exclusively committed herself to this guy. She can't date other men. And so she's just in this situation where her needs aren't getting met and a man's not motivated to really prioritize her or the relationship. So everything you said is really important. Yeah. I And I think that On the subject of the label, I think that it is one thing to get somebody to agree to that label, and it's another thing to actually change the fundamental underlying uh, foundation of the relationship. I think sometimes a person's desire to achieve a particular relationship status is driven by a desire to lock something down, a desire to gain more security in the relationship than the person already has. And I think that your desire to progress the relationship should be to deepen the connection with each other, not to try to gain some sense of security, because security like that is an illusion. And if you believe that some future state of the relationship will offer you more security than you have right now, that probably indicates that there is some sort of underlying instability in the relationship. I agree. So basically, if you don't like what's going on in the relationship as it is right now, don't further invest yourself or glue yourself to it or try to get him to agree to some sort of label or a deeper commitment because that's not what ultimately is going to inspire him to want to make you a priority. So we have five things that we want you to keep in mind for anyone in this situation. The first one is that what's truly for you will bring you clarity, not confusion. This is so important. I hear from women all the time who were just feeling confused and frustrated over a man's mixed signals. And with the right person, you just won't feel confused because they'll make it clear with their actions that they're serious about you and ready to move things forward. So it's so important to keep in mind the right person for you will bring you total clarity, not make you feel confused. And the second thing is to watch what he's doing most of the time, say 90 plus percent of the time, and pay attention to whether that is something that you yourself want to commit to right now as the relationship currently stands. Because if he is not 
investing and committing time and prioritizing you as the relationship currently stands, why would you yourself want to further commit to that? The third thing we wanted to share is that, of course, it's fine to ask. If you're feeling confused about something, asking for clarity is not going to push the right person away. I actually did a whole live stream on this topic not too long ago. It was called Say This to Tell a Man What You Want or What You're Looking For in a Relationship. So I can include a link to that in the description of this episode if you want to check that out. We shared some situations in which you might want to ask for clarity and exactly what to say. But keep in mind that talking about the relationship or asking for clarity won't push the right man away if he's truly interested and on the same page in terms of what he's ultimately looking for too. And the fourth thing that we wanted to share is to pay attention to both his words and his actions, and particularly to take the one of those two things that you would probably prefer to hear or see the least as the most truthful, and that's to say that you should watch his actions, even if he is telling you that he's ready for commitment and he's ready to further the relationship, but he's not prioritizing you and he is not showing that he is actually ready by his actions, then you should pay attention to that and believe that that is a good indication of how he will continue to respond in your relationship. And vice versa, even if it seems like there's good chemistry and good compatibility with somebody but he's flat out telling you that he is not looking for a committed relationship or he's not looking for any of the things that maybe you would like to see in a long-term relationship, you should believe those things as well. And the last thing we wanted to share is the importance of focusing on the connection, not the label. The connection, in our opinion, is the number one most valuable asset you have in the relationship, not the label you put around it. There needs to be something for him to commit to. And from our experience and in our opinion, that's the connection. So don't get caught up on, are we boyfriend, girlfriend? Are we going to get married one day? Because if the connection's not there, He's going to lose his motivation to keep prioritizing you and wanting to meet your needs and make you happy. Would you agree? Right, exactly. So do you have any other thoughts on this question before we close out? The one other thing that I would add is that I think a relationship is a continuum. And that's to say that each quote unquote milestone really should merely be the next logical step along that path. I think in our relationship in the early stages, there were no points at which I was having to debate and really contemplate whether I was ready for the next step in our relationship. They just moved along and happened naturally before we even knew it. And that's not to say that in the course of a long relationship, there might not be turning points or there may not be points where you could look back and recognize in the future that there was some progression made at a particular point. But the idea of labels along the path of a relationship, I think, are just the artifacts of a relationship progressing naturally and healthily. Yeah, it's not like once we had an exclusivity conversation, I felt you start to prioritize me more. You were prioritizing me from the beginning, and that's something that made me want to continue spending time with you and investing in our relationship. So that's a great point. We hope this was helpful. I know I get questions all the time from women in similar situations. And for everyone listening, you can always get your personal questions answered by my top coaches in a private online forum. I'll include a link to that in the description of this episode. And thanks for listening. We hope to talk with you again very soon. If you're tired of struggling in your love life and you want a proven system to get into and maintain a relationship where you're consistently loved, valued, and cherished, go to forever1234.com. 